Hey everyone, this is Chris from Console Customs and today I am going to take you through the installation of our PS4 Reflex V2 programmable button mapping mod. With this mod you can add up to four buttons on your controller uh, which can basically be programmed to any controller button, d-pad direction, thumbstick clicks, trigger, touchpad button um, on the fly. So. Uh, we just solder once and we can change them at any time. So we'll go through that. Uh, we do also offer a version which is not programmable. If you're just looking for an easy way to add some buttons and you don't need the ability to change them, uh, that's this one. This is our Easy Mapper mod. And it just gives you some nice easy connections for all your buttons. We'll show this mod in a separate video. With your kit, uh, you will also get some wire. These are already cut to length, but uh, you'll get several colors of wire in a bundle with your kit. And uh, depending on what you choose, some buttons. So we have smaller buttons. Uh, good if you're going to add possibly some uh, uh, paddles, um, or if you just like a smaller button. We currently do not sell paddles, but uh, hopefully will soon in the future. So we'll, we're going to use these right now for our installation because uh, they fit in more places in the controller. Uh, but we do also offer a larger button like this one and uh, gives you a nice bigger surface area to press, but uh, is, you're limited to where you can install it in the controller. Also, you need a PH00 size Phillips screwdriver. Uh, it's also available to add as an option with the kit. This is uh, the ones that come with the kit. They're, they're cheap, but they get the job done. Uh, if you already have one, you can just uh, leave that off. One thing you'll also need, which we do not offer, is a drill bit to add your buttons. This is for the small size buttons. So this is a 964, but uh, you can also use a 1 8 inch drill bit. And uh, for our friends in the rest of the world uh, where they use metric, that's a 3.5 millimeter. So you, you guys would want a 3.5 millimeter drill bit. Um, you also need a hot glue gun to put in your buttons. This is a cheap one from a hobby store, costs three or four dollars. So to get started, we will look at where we want to add our buttons. Um, the place we're going to add them today, we'll put two buttons in, uh, the most common, uh, X and circle, basically right on the inside of these trigger grips uh, where my thumbs are. Now, this is about the only place in the controller where those larger buttons will fit. So, if you want to use the larger buttons, you're basically going to have to put them right on the inside of the grip here. Um, there's just not room in any other locations for them. So other places people like to put buttons, maybe even further down the grip here, um, right on the back edges of this label. Some people like them up here a little further. Really, it's, it's your preference, but uh, we'll put them right here on the inside of the grip, most common location. I've already removed the screws from this controller just to make this a little faster. It's only four screws. Nothing's covered by any stickers and the case basically pops open. This one's been open before so it came open a little easier but you might hear a little bit of popping when you're opening a controller shell. So we want to kind of hold our triggers and pull that cover off and be careful because we have a ribbon cable that connects both halves of the controller together and it just pulls straight out from the main controller half there. So right now we uh, we're going to focus on the buttons and putting them where we want them. So we will take take our drill bit here. And you can see inside here there's kind of some different lines in there uh, can kind of help you to figure out where you put your button so you get them at the same place on either side of the controller um, but it's really again it's it's up to you um, 
you can see there are some other pieces of plastic in here which may block some of the places you want to put your button. Um, if you really want them in those locations, like right behind this sticker, there's actually this little L-shaped piece, and we'll just cut that out if we wanted to put the button right there. Uh, the only place you really don't want to put a button is right in the center. This is where your battery goes. So if you put it right there, your controller shell is probably not going to close properly uh, because the battery is going to get in the way. So again, we'll put ours right on the inside of the grips, the most common location. Kind of just get it lined up center. Center here. We like to start from the inside. Oh, we've got a nice hole there. What we also like to do, uh, we'll take, this is a countersink. It's a small one. Uh, pick that up at Harbor Freight if you're in the, in the U.S. real cheap. Put that in your hole. Spin it a couple times. It just cleans up the edges, makes it look real nice. You can do that on both sides if you like. Uh, you could also take the tip of a knife and kind of run it around the, the hole there. So we've got one side done. We'll do the other here real quick. Try and get it in the same general location so they feel the same. And again, we'll just clean up the edges of these holes. Set that off to the side. So now we are ready for our buttons. As I said, we'll use the small buttons. This has two sets of legs on it, and we really only need one of those. So you can see they're kind of two legs on one side, and you've got nothing, two legs straight across. So we're just going to take two of those on the same edge there and break them off. We'll do that same thing with the other button. Just because we don't need all those legs getting us confused. Now we have two legs. We'll hook up two wires. Easy. So on this inside grip it can be a little tricky. You want to kind of get your button in there, hold it in place, and I'll take and get some glue on a couple of the edges. Want to make sure it's sitting down in there. Just not covering the whole thing yet, just uh, on a couple edges to help hold it in place till that glue dries and then we'll get the rest of it. One thing you want to watch for is just along this inside edge here. Um, I didn't end up with any glue there but if you do, once it hardens you kind of want to clear that out with your fingernail or a knife because that's where the shells mate together so it will just uh, make the shell a little bit harder to close if you get glue there. So we'll give that a second to dry and uh, come back and start the other side. Okay, we've given that about a minute or so to dry. We're back. You can kind of test out our button, make sure it pushes okay. Uh, at this time what you might want to do is take these legs and bend them down. It doesn't really matter which way the legs are facing. Um, this one's facing towards the bottom of the controller. They could face the other way. Um, so we'll do that and we'll stick a little bit more glue on the back side of the button we'll add a little bit more once we add some wires to that so let that dry but we'll start on the other side just doing the same thing I'll put this one in with the, uh, the legs facing the other direction 
but just kind of get that in and hold it with one hand. Get some glue to help get it started. All right, we'll give that uh, another minute or so to dry and uh, finish it up. Okay, I went ahead and finished up this button, added glue on all four sides. So now we've got that in there pretty well, both of them. So we can test to make sure that they work well. So now we can uh, move on to adding our wires to these buttons. What I like to do is just take and add some solder to the legs. That way we're not trying to hold wire and solder and the soldering iron all at the same time. Get some solder on each of these legs. And we can take our wires and add them now. Each button needs a ground wire and then another wire which is connected uh, to the button that you want it to be. So what I have here is two white wires. We'll use those as our ground wires and uh, and a red and a green for the other one. So we'll attach one white, white wire to each button. And one of the other colors. So we'll give you uh, several colors of wire with the kit so you can do this. Color of the wire doesn't really matter, it's just uh, you know your preference. Try and like to keep things the same, the same color, uh, such as all the ground wires the same color, just to, to make it easier when we're trying to put things together. So we'll get this last one in. There we go. These these wires are um, about five inches long. That's about the right length for what you need. Um, that's about uh, twelve and a half centimeters for the, the rest of the world out there using metric. So now that we have those in place. Let's go ahead and just add a little hot glue over top. Just make sure that the uh, the wires stay put. Now these ones kind of are coming back over top of the button here. The direction I put those in. So got that done. And we can set that off to the side and move on to our controller. Okay, now we can move on to our controller side of the installation. So the first thing we need to do is remove the battery. This is clipped in place. We've got two clips on either side up here. We just take our screwdriver and kind of pop those out to the side. And we need to remove our battery plug. Now it's best to do this with something like a pair of side cutters where you can grip the actual plug, not the wires. We'll wiggle it out of place there and just set it off to the side. So this is a newer style controller. We have connection pads on each side and um, uh, also we have a ribbon cable connection for our touch pad and a screw that we need to remove. Some of the older controllers they do not have the little clips on the side of the circuit board here, uh, but they still have the screw and uh, this ribbon cable. Sometimes this ribbon cable can be a little tough to get out. If you find that you can't get it, just grab a pair of needle nose and pull it out. So on this newer controller, we need to pop these little clips on either side. Just 
do that with our screwdriver. So now we can see these two connection pads on either side. Uh, the mod is designed to work with both old and new styles, so you can see these line up with the edge, but then you've got that center piece. We actually have to cut that off along that white line to install the mod in this controller. And just real quick, I will show you one of the older controllers. As you can see, it just has one connection pad in the center, so in this case we would just cut off the two arms going out to the sides on those two white lines if we were installing there. So now with this we have an option to be able to hook up the touchpad which we will do today. There is one small solder pad right there for the touchpad. It does make it a little bit more difficult to install but uh, not terrible. If The first thing we'll do here is get uh, rid of this part of the mod that we're not using. So just take our scissors and cut that off. So now the mod's ready to be installed. If we did not want to install the touchpad, you could just go ahead and lay this in place in here. Um, the mods will the mod will line up right with the the posts that are already there and sit right over top. So we could just do that and put our circuit board back in place. But since we want to hook up the touchpad, we have to do it a little bit different. We have to start on the actual board because we have to solder to the touchpad. So in this case what we like to do is get uh, the legs and line, holes lined up with the board. So everything lines up there, hold it in place. Just put a little dab of hot glue here. And do that on both sides. You kind of want if you're if you're going to do this, you want to glue away from the connections. You don't want to put glue down here; it could interfere with the the connections. So we put it halfway up the leg, kind of on top of those chips. Now that those are in place, you can see here when we push the board down that. Uh, that pad lines up right with that leg of the button. So we are going to just solder those together. And we will be done. back up there so now you can see that that pad is soldered to the leg and now we are done by with hooking up the touchpad and we can flip the board back over so we push that down in place put our ribbon cable for our touchpad back in on these newer controllers this just pushes in on the older controllers, there is actually a small lever that flips up. So when you're taking it out, you'd flip up that lever and pull the wire out and put it back in, flip it down, locks it into place. And we have ours back in and put our screw back in to hold the board. Okay, now we can flip our mod over. Uh, we'll just take some hot glue and glue that down into place. Just a couple of dabs across here. Flip it over and push it down, hold it for a few seconds. And there we go. So now also we can optionally hook up R3 and L3 which we'll do now but uh, if you don't care to be able to map to those buttons then you do not need to hook these up so to do that we'll take and add some solder 
on the R3 and L3 pads and also where those go inside the controller and take a few short pieces of wire here so we can solder those to those buttons and I'll give you a close up so you guys can see where those are going the uh, R3 comes here, we've kind of got the wire looped around that spot right there, and L3 over to here. As I said, those are optional. Um, if you don't care to map to those, you don't have to hook those up. Now we just have to add our buttons. So you can see up top we've got M1 through 4 up there. By default, M1 is going to map to X. M2 is circle, M3 is square, and M4 is triangle. So you can put it to those buttons if that's the ones you're going to use, but again, the mod is programmable so you can change any button at any time to any other button that you want it to be. So we'll just use the M1 and M2 for our two buttons, and uh, those are the most common that most people want to map with anyway. Uh, this this mod also has an LED, so when we are changing the assignment of a button, the LED creates a small light, uh, basically in the corner of the light bar here, so you know when the change has been made. Uh, so we can take a look at that in a little while. So we can bring the back half of our shell over here. What I will do... Again, is just put some solder on the pads for M1 and M2. Now, when you were looking at those, you could see one of those was a square shape and one was a circle. Um, all the squares are just ground pads, and the circle connections are the connection for the button. So, uh, it doesn't really matter which one these go to, as long as you're going to the right, uh, the you know, right pads for one button. So we just take our white and green from one button and I'll put the green to the circle pad and the white to the ground pad. That's a square one, but again, doesn't doesn't really matter. And we'll do the same thing for our other button. Just like that. And with that we're ready to go. So we can just put our battery back in. And put the ribbon cable back into the back half of the shell. This can be a little difficult trying to show on the video here, but it just pushes in place into uh, this plug. Just making sure that uh, so that, that blue uh, stiffener there is on the outside and the, the side with the copper contact pads goes towards the center. So we'll just move our wires so they're out of the way. close our controller up. So now by default uh, I've got an X button and a circle button. If I wanted to change one of those all I need to do is just first hold that reflex button. So I would hold that and then let's say hold triangle, hold both of them for about eight seconds 
and after eight seconds it's not going to do it because the controller is off but you'll see a small green light flash up here once you see that green light flash the reassignment's done you can let go of the buttons and now that button is triangle just that easy so you can do that for uh, any of these four face buttons the four triggers d-pad uh, the touchpad if you hooked it up and thumbstick clicks if you hooked those up if you have any questions you can email us from our website um, we also sell these in bulk so if you are a business looking to get into installing these uh, just shoot us an email and uh, we can give you some information about that thank you